All right, guys, I want to get this thing kicked off because I don't. I, I always end up running out of time, and even though I think I'm a little ahead of schedule, I'm probably close enough to it. But um, here's the deal: all we're dealing with this is a this is a plastic container. It's like a Tupperware container. Um, anybody who saw the mounting uh, workshops that I did for the beetle and the atlas moth, you saw this same container. Um, I've since mounted all those insects out. Needless to say, now I'm going to refill this. I try to keep a pretty steady flow going. It's how I. Uh, it's how I keep stay productive. And on a day like this, you see hardly any lag? That's beautiful. Guys, we're showing, the internet's being good today, man. Apparently there's no lag, so we are real time, man. This is gonna be nice. Hopefully everything stays that way and we don't get interrupted and fun stuff. Um, those of you checking in, I'm not able to know. So let me, uh, Owen's on it, so he'll be letting you know. Now, I wanna, I wanna do this step by step. I'm laying paper towels down into the bottom of this container. Um, it's just a Tupperware container. I'm now going to put a little bit of water in each corner. And that will, over the next couple hours, that will slowly absorb into those paper towels to where it'll be into the middle. And then I'm going to put a little dot right here in the middle just to anchor this down to the ground. And it'll also add a little bit of moisture to it, just like that. So. This is all I need right now. Um, just enough moisture to get it done. If I put too much moisture in, everything's gonna get soggy and I'm gonna have moldy bugs in about 24 hours. These are gonna be butterflies and insects from Madagascar that we are gonna be loading into the relaxer today. We are live, no script. Um, so if you guys have any questions, anything you need to know, let me know. I've got Owen. Watching things, keeping over, keeping an eye in the studio today. So literally, I'm at, I'm coming in from the side now. So it did turn it. I don't know why it does that. That sucks. Anyway, again, guys, these are insects that are going to get relaxed by the moisture that I've put into the container. They will slowly over the next 24 hours or so uh, absorb this moisture just enough that they don't get moldy but enough that I can then mount out the wings. Uh, what a beautiful butterfly that is. These butterflies, uh, everything you're seeing in the in the relaxers today are going to be all from Madagascar. So uh, anybody with a, uh, you know, if your kids are fans of the movie, well, now you're looking at the bugs that come from there. So pretty cool stuff. These were collected back in 1993. So if you're curious as to how long you can keep insects in paper, uh, presumably indefinitely, as long as you take good care of them. Now, I, you know, I have large amounts. I'm not real proud of it, but I also don't have a lot of room to, to play with stuff. So I have large amounts of of insects in paper right now. Even though I've got 150,000 mounted bugs upstairs, I still have large amounts that have never seen the light of day since, in some cases, some of the day, you know, some of the time that they were collected. So, crazy, crazy stuff. I'm going to add a little more moisture because things aren't separate, aren't. So, I need what I'm slowly hoping happens is the paper towels will. We'll drink up most of the moisture. This is real wet in the corners, but it's going to be, it's still perfectly dry out here. I want to get that a nice even spread across there. Um, and all I did, guys, I went in earlier and I, I went into my uh, Madagascar box of enveloped insects and butterflies. And I, and I went through and I picked out uh, some of the, you know, bigger, more exciting stuff because that's, that's what I do. This is what I, this, look at this. Look at that swallowtail butterfly. Just an amazing butterfly. Uh, hey guys, if you have any questions at all, we are non-scripted today. Um, give you another rundown of what we're doing. I am prepping some relaxing containers. These are all butterflies that are coming out of these envelopes, collected in Madagascar back in 1993. And they are going to go into this relaxer there's there's been some moisture i put some moisture in the container and these insects are going to sit in here 
for probably what is about 24 hours. And then I would be able to pull them out and mount them up. Now, as you can see, and maybe, maybe some of you are noticing, some of the more experienced folks are probably going to notice right away. Not everything, look, look, there's the, the antenna broke off and things. You can see where there's some field wear to these things. In other words, these, these are collected butterflies. These aren't purchased, bought kind of stuff. Um, I have nothing against that. Don't get me wrong. I'm just letting you know these aren't purchased. These were actually collected on site in Madagascar. Um, I don't really get too wigged out over a couple missing antenna or, or a little nick in the wings. Sometimes I think I like that because it, it, it looks and it, and it basically shows me and proves to me that, that these are not, you know, store bought or, or internet bought bugs. These were, were in fact the collected ones. Um, cause when you buy insects on the internet, nobody wants to spend good money on beat up bugs. Um, but when you get to go there and collect them yourself, uh, you don't mind a couple nicks and a, maybe a, a couple missing antenna. Like this moth is pretty beat up. All right, here's your question. Any, any tips for butterflies that won't relax this way? I've tried to relax my legs for recently. Okay, who asked the question? Uh, Sam. Okay, who? Sam. Sam, hey, Sam, that is a good question. Um, here's, here's the deal. Uh, you almost have to trial and error this out. I've got this down to a system. There's a lot of other people out there that are going to use a completely different system than the one I use. I know people that use sand. I know people that use little screens to keep the bugs up off the bottom and then they put their moisture in the bottom. Uh, I've seen everybody has their own technique and tactic. Um, I, because I work with kids and I get a lot of young kids who have to do this kind of stuff, I stay away from chemicals and you know anti-mold chemicals and because all that stuff exists. So I stay away from that. I, I keep it very, very silly simple. I go with some paper towels, uh, a little bit of water, um, right out of the tap and then the dried bugs. If you're having a hard time getting your insects to relax, uh, your tiger swallowtail for instance, if you're having a hard time getting that to relax, it's probably a timing thing um, up against the, the amount of moisture you're putting in. And it is a very delicate balance. If you put too much moisture and wait too long, you end up with moldy bugs. If you, if you put in just the right moisture and check it periodically, you know, every six, eight, ten hours, check those things. Check the antenna and see if things are softening up a little bit. You will hit it, hopefully, right at a perfect time to where um, <laughs> things aren't going to be moldy. But trust me, man, with all the kids that I've worked with doing this, it is almost a trial and error process. It's almost, you almost have to, uh, look at this, look at this sphinx moth. Almost, <laughs> that is so beautiful. God, it's like Christmas when I'm doing this. But yeah, it's almost trial and error, Sam. You, you, you kind of have to wing it and, and hope you get it right. Guys, thank you so much for checking in. Uh, Owen's on the boards. He can get your questions. Don't hesitate to ask. All, oh, look at this. There's another one. Same type of sphinx moth. It looks like a male and a female, which is cool. There's, yep, that's a male and a female. That's a pair right there. Very, very cool. Such beautiful, beautiful insects. And again, guys, we're looking at Madagascar back in 1993. That's where these, are, that's where these came from. Um, outstanding. Look at this sphinx moth. Another... Like I said, man, I, I can't help, but I mean, how can you not appreciate that thing? Wing it, no pun intended. Wing it. There you go. So nice. Um, I, I love being able to go into these old boxes um, of all these, these trips and stuff um, because it, I, I can, there's times when I go into these, these boxes and I actually remember collecting specific things. Um, things that are unique, things that are maybe a one or a two that I only have, and I will actually remember those things. These are really cool. I don't know. I don't know what they refer to these in in Africa and in South America. These would be like an actinote, um, you know, like an ithometer, an actinote. Africa is loaded with with a whole, just a ton of different species of these neat little butterflies. And some of them, look at this, have have the clear wings, um, or almost clear wings. But they're just a, a bazillion different species. Um, and every time I turn around, I, I, I'm kind of addicted to those things. There's, I just have a really weird infatuation with actinotes. I've got drawers of those things. A lot of mimicry goes into those as well. So anytime I open up a, a box, Jim Vital, welcome in, buddy. Um, next time I, uh, anytime I go into those boxes, I go in and I, and I look for unique stuff. Because, again, it's for program-oriented stuff. Look, here's another... 
actinode or thingy, whatever they're called. I can, I wish I'd know these answers, but I don't. Um, but look at this, just such neat little butterflies. Here's another one right here. And uh, super uber cool stuff, man. All right, and again, we're missing a couple antenna, but I don't get too upset over that. I, I just I just can't. Um, I'm just happy to have room in some drawers that I can put these things out there and, and get these things mounted into into boxes and in displays so that people can see them. I'm just happy for the for the bugs and the insects. Now, this one is kind of full now, and I don't want to go any more than this because I got two other ones I want to do, and we're already burnt up no, about 10 minutes here. So I'm going to move some things around, and I'm going to spread these out a little bit. And I would probably, there's a lot of people who would probably be cringing because I'm not using forceps to do this. But again, um, I'm touching the undersides for the most part. So anything that's going to show is, is not going to show to the people when I mount it. I'm, that stuff's all on the upper side. Um, this, you can't tell what this is. This is a brilliant blue swallowtail. Um, it's not the Ulysses swallowtail. Don't get it mixed up. Um, it's, it's sort of like this one here. Um, just a, you know, a much cleaner brighter species beautiful beautiful butterflies uh africa is so loaded with insects uh that their butterflies are phenomenal look at the camo job on this thing man this is a traxus it's such a neat neat butterfly and and traxus also occur really commonly in africa under a bazillion different types and I, I don't want to say I have most of them, probably because I probably don't, but I know I have a bunch of different Traxxas, and they're all really, really cool butterflies. Um, super, super fast-flying butterflies, too. They're, not, they're no fun to catch. Um, I, I usually end up having to bait them in because they get so difficult to collect sometimes that you either have to, to outrun them on the wing and, and you know, chase them down to where they, you tire them out, basically, and then they land... Uh, which is not good in Africa because you tend to run up on things you shouldn't how, how be running up on. Um, who asked him? What's the question? Uh, Melissa. What was the question? Um, how do you preserve not sure if someone asked you and also gorgeous question. Oh, thank you. Um you gotta tell me who says these things. Um Melissa, that question's a good question. Um when these come off of the boards or, or before they go into the box. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, I'll show you real quick. I'm going to I'm gonna seal this one up, Melissa, because we're going to call this one done for now. I'm going to seal this one up. And then, because what we have are paper towels, some moisture, the insects, and now we seal it. And I'm going to lock that thing down, and it's going to sit for probably about 24 hours before I even bother opening it again. <laughs> Look at static. Static is picking up the bugs and bringing them up. I pro should probably fix that. I got static electricity moving my bugs around in here. It's ruined. That's funny. That doesn't happen very often. Jim, Jim, Jim said you should stick a sunset, in there. A sunset moth. Yeah. I if I uh, <laughs> if I needed any for displays, Jim, I would do it. Um, that's be, that would be a good one for today's broadcast. But again, in all honesty, I really wasn't getting picky. Um, these, I'm, I'm looking for stuff that I don't already have in boxes. So everything you see going into these, <laughs> there's another wing just popped up. Everything you see going into this box is all new, um, new insects to the collection. So they're not new insects to science. Don't get me wrong. Can, 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 can shaffers yeah. notice, um, said they're to stay here. Hey. Hey, Kim, how you doing? Look, here's what they look like. They're in boxes, and I like to keep them in, in Ziploc bags, and then with those Ziploc bags, there's going to be mothballs or moth crystals and some silica gel um, inside those, those separate boxes. Um, when I break things out, then I bring them out to here like this. Is this thing centered okay, man? We good? Yeah, we're good. Let's zoom in a little bit on this one. I didn't realize we weren't zoomed in on the last one, man. You guys didn't have a real good view. Now we got a better view. All right, and now we're gonna start all over. And check it, man. Um, here's your here's your dad info on these. Okay, Mandrake Butterfly Farm in Madagascar. Very cool stuff. I'm gonna pull this. We're gonna put some more paper towel in. I'm gonna fold this one down because I don't like it when it rides up the sides like that. That's probably begging for a. Uh, 
too much moisture getting on top of the bugs. I want to keep the moisture underneath them if I can. And we're going to lay this one down right there. So now two paper towels. Each corner takes a hit. And right in the middle. Boop. Done deal. All right. And we're right back where we were before. So we now have more insects in paper. Um, now the one in the other box that was beat up that I showed you was field. This one has some a little bit of field wear. This is just a nicer, cleaner one, uh, which is why I found that one first, and then I found this one afterwards. So I just left them out. Um, it made a nice comparison. So there's going to be the same butterfly, but a really nice, clean one that's not all kind of field worn. This also looks like a female by the looks of it. So I have a male in that box and a female in this box now. Need to know who. Yeah, you think? <laughs> Owen thinks I should mount up a tarantula one of these days. All right, and I probably should. That might be fun. Um, I know Lisa will really appreciate that. <laughs> um, that was that was what Owen said. All right, so here's what I got. I got this one butterfly pulled out of here, and all the rest of these are beetles and a bunch of cockroaches. And I know people don't probably appreciate cockroaches as much as I can, but um, I'm still going to mount those up because those are all new cockroaches to my to my black drawer, which is the Blatoda. So I'm going to start throwing some beetles out here now. And look at that, dude. How cool is that beetle? It's got a big, almost like a, wow, that's kind of a neat crown on a, on a, on a thorax like that. That's just really cool. Um, what a neat, that's an elater. That's a uh, click beetle, for those of you who aren't sure what an elater is. That's a big, cool-looking Madagascar click beetle. And these are some neat beetles. Again, I would normally be using forceps, but I'm not. I just didn't want to. My dentist forceps would normally be here with me. And we're going to keep tossing these things. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Um, here's a little collage of things. Um, these, let me see. These are all beetles. There's a, and I was going to tell you that these are all, but then I looked in there and there's more than one. There's a bunch of different families. There's some scarabs. There's a, there's a really nice weevil. Again, guys, to me, this is like Christmas, man. Anytime I can, anytime I can go into a, a box of insects from back in 1993 and start pulling these things out, man. Oh, that's good to know, Jim. Thank you. I normally don't have a problem. I think it, I normally do this up on a kitchen table, in all honesty with you. Um, or I do it up in the bug man room, and that's on wood, and I, I don't have a problem. Here I have a tablecloth, and I got these green carpets down. I think it's just creating a, a big static charge down here that I don't normally have. That's not having those bugs hook themselves to the top of the container is not something I usually have. These are, I have no idea. I don't know if these are tenebrionid or what these beetles are. Again, these are all new going into my collection, so I haven't had a chance to even remotely start looking any of this stuff up yet. So I'm seeing these bugs and it's really freaking me out in some ways because some of these are uh some of these are just things I I, I, I just I haven't seen these things. Okay, Martin. Just cool stuff. Hey Martin, what up, dude? If you're asking about if you're asking about how they preserve go, going into the collection, short short answer is that that there isn't much that goes into it. The insects are are, are not the eat. Thank you, Martin. He's on it. So, Melissa, there's there's your 
There's your answer for you. That, that's that's Martin. Martin's got my back on that one because I got you the front. I got you the front end of it, but I forgot to answer the back end of your question. Um, again, these are like little tortoise beetles right here, guys. But I I don't know exactly what they are. This because um, the weird thing is when you go to Africa, um, even even a lot of the butterfly families aren't aren't given the same names that I'm familiar with. You know here, everything comes of change now here's something that will kind of probably get some folks excited these are some really nice big tiger beetles um i don't i don't know what they are uh johnny chong you know some of you folks could probably help me out on some of these you, you folks that really know your tiger beetles these are some outstanding tiger beetles and again i should have forceps and i don't so i'm going to try to make this work those were not supposed to come out as a big clump uh, there they go there they're setting separating for me um these are really nice. Uh, I got some really big jumbos. Try and slide these down here. About as gentle as I can get them. I don't want to break antenna on those if I can help it. And that was pretty well done. Um, as they relax, I can then separate them out. But I'm not going to try and separate them right now. But these are really nice, big Madagascar tiger beetles. Um, outstanding. Man, that, see, that, that gets me excited because I can remember collecting that kind of stuff. So... That stuff gets me, uh, gets me all jazzed up. That's like going back in, back in time. And now we're going to toss some, some cockroaches in here. Um, and these are not Madagascar hissing cockroaches. That's why I collected these. Uh, these are something different. Um, and these, again, these are new to the collection as well. Not new to science. Don't get me wrong. That's not, that's not these kind of bugs. These are, these are probably all over books and stuff. But, um. Guys, if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to hit. We're down. we got about seven or eight minutes left. I've got one more box I'm going to do, and then we're going to probably get out of here. But right now, all the insects you see right now going in are Madagascar, collected in 1993. We're going to call this box good. I'm going to shift a few things around. Um, and again, guys, keep in mind, it's not because of lacking for bugs it's lacking of time if i if i try to relax too many things i actually run out of time and then i end up having bugs go moldy on me because i don't have enough time to get to them and mount them up quick so i'm i'm pretty uh pretty careful about watching how many insects i i try to do at one time i'd love to just mount up a thousand i can usually run uh in a weekend i can do about three or four hundred insects um most of them are macros, you know, so that's that sounds like a big deal. But in reality, some of these people out here that are doing the smaller stuff are doing, you know, they may do five or six or seven hundred in a weekend. So they make me look pretty bad. All right. Got one last one we're going to do. Going to center this one up. And again, we're right back where we were. Got the bag full of bugs. Got the information. And this this stays with the box the whole time. That way. Okay. Thank you. Owen's Owen's trying to manage things here. He's doing a good job, man. So hopefully everybody appreciates Owen because he's here. Ah. Come on. Everybody likes cockroaches. Cockroaches need love too, man. Hey, I got a whole video on that over on YouTube, man. If you if you think cockroaches aren't a good thing, you need to go over to YouTube and check out my video. It's titled "Why Do People Hate Cockroaches." So there you go. You're. That's perfect. Go, go check that video. It's, it's, a, it's a good one. Gives you every reason you can actually appreciate cockroaches. And tells you all the things that you thought about cockroaches that are probably wrong. And I'm not even going to get into it. I'll let you go see that video. All right. Now, just for what it's worth, I'm going uh, to set this right down the middle. It's got the, paper, it's got the plastic bag, so we're good that way. This is what it looks like, guys, when I go into one of these bags. It's just a bag full of envelope insects. Um, and, and they're all individual day. So each day, daytime, nighttime, I have individual packs. And I keep that data. That data never leaves these insects. So I can never, you know, that way it's, it, it assures that I don't get them confused. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rifle down through this real quick. And I'm looking for stuff that I can use for programs. Um, there's a ton of cool stuff in here. But most of it is stuff that I just, I just can't use it. 
in current programming. So it's going to have to sit. And that, that stinks, man. That's terrible to think that I got all these amazing insects sitting here. And I can't even really put them to use right now. Um, again, I just ordered two more of the large cabinets, uh, which will give me 40 more drawers that I can fill with bugs and insects when they arrive. Uh, that's going to be a really good day in the bug man room. Uh, these are neat. Those are some big old moths. They look like butterflies, but those are moths. Okay. Coming down to time, guys. If you have any other questions before we, uh, before we roll out of here and give you back your day, now is a good chance to ask. I'm looking. Oh, there's a fulgord. That's a, that's a good one. That's a lantern fly or a fulgord. Maybe not the same thing to some people, but to me it is because in the, in the boxes it looks cool. He has bright red wings too, so we know we need him. Even though he's not the only one and it's not a first of them. This is a cool cicada right here. Neat. Very cool. Not a full gourd. It's a cicada. My bad. But still has bright red wings. I can see those. Neato, neato. All right. Got to throw some big sphinx moths down. Now, hey, just for what it's worth, folks, anybody catches this video, if you know anybody who is doing specific research on things, if you didn't... If you didn't, uh, if you know anybody out there who's doing specific research, uh, college level, grad student level, whatever the case is, and they have particular families of insects that they're doing research on, have them contact me because, um, again, man, I've got thousands and thousands of insects sitting in paper, some of which won't come out of paper, and, uh, and these things are sitting here, and if they're doing certain beetle families or certain butterflies or moth families, I would rather donate this stuff out to legitimate research causes than to sit on it for years and years and years. Uh, and I've had the Smithsonian and the Academy of Natural Sciences, and, or which it, well, I guess it's now Drexel, but I've had those guys actually here at the house several times, cruising through the collection, pulling out specific things for their research. Um, so there are people out there that do, that do need that. Ryan Selkirk uh, up at Penn State, he was down here couple months ago and he pulled a bunch of really nice beetles that he uses in his research as well so if you know anybody who needs bugs guys you hook you hook, hook us up let me know because i do want to uh i do want to find good causes for anything that i'm not going to use in the uh program displays it's just going to sit here until somebody either uses it uh or until i die and then will it to my kids who are not going to really want it either so let's uh yeah so let's uh let's see if we can find me some homes for some of this stuff that's a nice Sphinx moth right there. Real nice. Um, lots of Sphinx moths coming out of coming out of Africa. And last is a big old praying mantis I want to put in here. This is a uh, praying mantis. Guys, we are officially... How are we doing on time, Owen? Okay, we're... Oh, I thought we were out. But nope, Owen, tell me you got one more minute. So guess what? I'm going to use it. All right, good enough. Hey, guys, you know what? Nope. We're on Instagram. We're on YouTube. You got to click the... Subscribe, you gotta hit the bell. Owen always yells at me because I don't tell people to hit the bell. Um, but you know, find us over on YouTube, find us on Instagram. Lots of cool content there. Uh, I'm gonna keep loading bugs into this this one. This one isn't done yet, so I'm gonna keep doing this. But do, hey, look, man, you guys know I appreciate you. You know, we get to have these little meet and greets every Friday at 1 p.m. I'm doing uh, regular programming every Monday, Wednesday as well at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. So, guys, I appreciate you. I love you. Um, we're still under the uh, stuff going on here. So, be safe, be well, and be kind. You know the words. All right, man. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Have a great day.